In the opening scene poachers are seen scouting out the area and they get scared. While the others are setting up a new trap and they have caught a lion. In the meantime the two others are still alone and one of them has a massive wound and tells his friend to get out of there and runs right into a trap they made and the lion kills him. Dr. Nate Samuels, a recent widower, travels to South Africa's Mopani Reserve with his teenage daughters Meredith and Nora. The scientist and Mopani manager Martin Battles, who first met Nate and his wife, welcomes him back to the community. Nate and the girls are taken to the village where Nate's wife was raised by Martin. In the wake of his and his wife's divorce, which was followed by her terminal cancer diagnosis, Nate confesses to Martin his sorrow for being aloof. Martin and his family visit the restricted portions of the reserve the following day. Martin takes them to see a local lion pride and points out that one of them is hurt. As they arrive at the village something's off as it's very quiet so Nate and Martin go take a look while the two girls explore and Nate tells them to stick together. Martin finds that the most of the Sangha residents in a neighboring community have passed away. Nate runs to find his girls, Meredith said Nora just disappeared so they go looking for her in a panic and eventually Nate finds her and she is terrified from what she saw. Martin runs back to report the discovery, suspecting a renegade lion is to blame. On the way to get help, they come across a man who is badly hurt so they try help him and Martin takes his rifle and he goes after the lion. Martin is attacked while pursuing the lion. Nate heard the attack and he tells his girls to stay in the car and goes to find Martin in the pursuit. Nate sees the lion charge towards him and runs back to the car and jumped in just in time as the lion pounces on the car. They are left stranded as Meredith tries to flee but hits a tree instead. On a walkie-talkie, Martin warns Nate to keep away since the lion is using him as bait to draw the others out. Nate puts together a tranquilizer rifle because the radio is too far away to call for assistance. In an effort to distract the lion long enough to rescue Martin and make the journey back to civilization, he needs to tranquilize it. Meredith uses the diversion to divert the lion from attacking Martin. After the lion knocks Nate's rifle from his hands, Nora stabs it with a tranquilizer dart, prompting the animal to flee. Martin is returned to the vehicle by Meredith while Nate tends to his injury. As night falls, Martin, who is now healing, surmises that the lion became alone because poachers murdered its pride. The same poachers that killed the rogue's pride soon after show up and at first agree to drive the group to the village in exchange for cash. When the poachers notice Martin, a fervent anti-poacher, inside the vehicle, tensions increase. Most of the poachers are killed when the lion attacks and scatters them. Nate eludes the lion and discovers the truck keys that belong to the poachers. Back at the automobile, Martin manages to keep the lion at bay long enough for the sisters to flee, just in time as the car falls off the cliff. Martin sacrifices himself by igniting an explosion caused by the petrol leak, severely burning the lion, as Nate gets to his girls he notices Meredith is injured and she needs medical attention. Nate attends to Meredith's injuries inside the abandoned school the poachers used as their headquarters before searching for water. Nate returns and chases the lion away as it approaches the girls and prowls around. Nate locks his girls in a room and tells them he'll be back when he's through with the lion. Nate invites the neighborhood lion pride that Martin helped create by luring it into an entrance. The pride patriarchs step in and mercilessly kill the wretched renegade lion during the ensuing conflict when the lion nearly kills Nate. Nate is saved by a Mopani employee who arrives as he is about to pass out. When Nate awakens in a hospital, he tells his girls that he loves them. The three recreate the picture Nate's late wife made of herself next to her favorite tree when they later visit the preserve together as a family.